Eternal torment, agonized wail of lost souls, demons howling in the endless void. Eventually, all these things lose their charm. But enough about work. Allow me to introduce a man whose talent delights my dark heart. Master of dark sticky fun, your host, Ron Fitzgerald. And we're live. We are live, everybody. Thank you for joining me here in the realm. All right, thank you. you. Guys are always out there. There's people waiting already, which is awesome. Thank you. I know Sarah Sarah is out there. Hello, Sarah. Devil horns. Everybody, give us devil horns. Mecha lecha hi. Mecha hiney ho. <laughs> in the immortal words of John B. the Genie, uh, may he rest in peace wherever he's at. All right. Uh, so, uh, Ron Fitzgerald here, master of the dark realm, which means I'm an actor and a gothic illusionist if we haven't met before. And I make dark, sticky fun for you guys. So, Thank you again for joining me. We have a very special live stream tonight, uh, which I will introduce to you uh, in just a moment. I, I have uh, Morgoth and Mrs. Morgoth here with me in the studio again. Everybody say hi to them. Hello. There you go. You can hear Morgoth back there. We're... Uh, Sarah uh, says, uh, greetings. Uh, greetings, Sarah. Rebecca Evans. 
Well Rebecca, thank you. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. How are you doing? And Lauren uh, Wilson says hello. That's the whipping boy. Whip in the house. Hello, Whip. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? What's it going on? So how did everybody like uh, your new intro, your friend? Yeah, what did you think of our new our new friend in the beginning, our, our hell demon there? Um, Morgoth pounding away on the AI uh, made that we made we made I, so I hope we haven't inadvertently like released Skynet on the world maybe um, so if a Terminator shows up at your house we had nothing to do that that uh, but we made an AI uh, demon to introduce me which is quite fun although I wanted like the bikini version of the demon and a sexy <laughs> voice with an English accent but maybe later maybe later we'll make some more for it we'll make more AI but we want to we need a name we didn't name our AI demon yet. So we have a little contest tonight. If you're out there and you're in already, type it in, think about it for a minute, consider your you know, name, demony or otherwise, and um, uh, give us some names. If you have a name if you, you know, that you think uh, would be befitting our awesomely hellish AI, which will one day take over the world and then subjugate all of us. But you know, for now, we have control. We can name that dude. So if you're going to name for our AI demon, then please type it in the chat. There might even be a prize involved. I'm not promising anything. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Rebecca, I said Sarah says, sweet, get me out of Charleston. Uh, oh, yeah, we need to break you out of there, don't we? Uh, let's see, Rebecca Evans. Yeah. Uh, good, thanks. Hope you are well. Uh, Alex Raven, 1313, okay. Dr. Raven. There he is. There he is. Thank you. He did a great job. I mean, yeah, he uh, Morgoth surprised me. He's like, look, demon, AI demon. And uh, I loved it. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to put him up uh, at the start of the show tonight. Alex Raven says, uh, love it, the AI. Sarah says the intro is cool. Thank you. Um, Alex Raven says, just name him Martin. <laughs> I wonder where you got that from. We were we we got to hang out. Sir Kevin and I we were hanging out with uh, Mister Mister Raven in there, and we went to a drag show. So oh, okay. yeah, those are the guy with little 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 non celebration celebration. Yeah. But we went out to the drag show at Pecan in Chicago, and it was awesome fun. It was awesome awesome fun. So I you know go. Go see live entertainment again. Go see a drag show. Come see my show. There's no drag in my show yet, but come see my show when you know we'll have an announcement on something too. I'm I'm still working on that. And also to give you an update, I am still working on the book. It is a long process of you know drinking red wine and absinthe and sitting down and writing. It's weird. I try and pretend I'm Stephen King, even though I'm writing nonfiction. But it sounds like fiction because some of it's so weird. I've got great stories you guys have never heard before and embellishments on stories that you have heard before. So you'll like the book. Uh, tentatively titled Monstrous Magic. Uh, there'll be more announcements on that or if there's any title tweakings or the subtitle, what that's going to be and everything as we go along. But, uh, you know, keep looking. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working. It's a process. It's a process. I don't know. If any of you have ever written a book or anything more extensive, more long form before, but um, tell us in the chat if you have. I'd love to hear about that. Uh, Sarah S says, I name it Pillow Pants. Pillow Pants? Yeah. Lord of, of Darkness. Pillow Pants. Mm, pillow Pants, Lord of Darkness. I kind of like that. We'll have to see what else. Uh... Although there might be a problem because uh, that's the name from Push uh, 2. Oh, is it? Is that where you got pillow pants from? It it sounds vaguely perverted, so I kind of like it. But that might be a that might be a copyright infringement, we think. Martin's not bad either. <laughs> Martin. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad I'm glad you are. I'm I'm working on. It. What else we got in there? Yes. Shall we? All right. Tonight, very special, as we teased in the uh, the the awesome thumbnail for this, 
we got a special guest on tonight, uh, Shelby McDougal, my friend. I've known her for many years at Flashback Weekend Chicago Horror Convention. So hi to uh, Mike and me up there watching. And um, Shelby, actually, when I saw her there last time, she was actually working uh, at the event, which was very cool because we first met at the event years ago. Anyway, she is now a film director and has made her first film and uh, it's called Insecurities. It's a short horror film which you're gonna get to watch tonight right here on the show. So uh, thank you for being here. It's a great night. And we are now gonna bring on Shelby. Hello. Shelby. Can you hear us, Shelby? Hello. There she is. I heard a hello. Yeah, I can hear you guys. Can you, you hear me? Okay. How are you doing, Shelby? I'm good. How are you guys? I am great. Good. Wow, there's hardly no any delay now. That's good. Excellent. 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 So, um, now, uh, tell everybody a little bit about um, your film project, Insecurities, and how that was part of, of uh, film school and everything. Okay. So it was my senior thesis project, essentially. We mm -hmm. I went to school at University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. So what they do there for the film students is they do a senior one, senior two class. So essentially you're taking a full year to make this. Um, I started writing it like the winter break beforehand because I knew I was going to be in the class. And I did all the pre-production during senior one and the filming at the end of it and all the post-production, like the editing and stuff for the senior two class. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Were you inspired by any, any sort of directors or movies or stories to make insecurities? I think the biggest movie that came to mind, like when I first came up with the project, was this one called Starry Eyes. I saw on Netflix like years before making this. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm familiar with it. I haven't seen uh, all of Starry Eyes yet, but that's that's cool. That's very cool. Um, and originally, uh, she would ask me to be in it, but because of all my fun with my jaw surgery and everything, the timing didn't work out for me, so I missed out. Yeah, that was a crazy day because it, it all happened within a span of a day because we were supposed to film the I next know. day. You were already up and running. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <It's insane. laughs> so I'm sorry I didn't make it into it, but I did promise you that we'd bring it out here and we will uh, we'll show it to everybody. We will share it with the world via the interwebs. How's that? Sounds good. That's perfect. Do you have anything else? What was What was it like, the journey on like shooting and production and everything. What what kind of challenges uh, did you run into? There were two big challenges for sure. Like the scheduling, because I had a lot of actors, especially in like different days, because I had the two main actresses. And then like it was arranging like the classroom scene, because um, I had quite a few actors for that one. Um, so, like just getting everyone's schedule as well as like locations. Because I remember Airbnb was giving me like such a hard time because I wanted to, film yeah. like the climatic scene in an airbnb but like a bunch of people are just like no we don't want you to film here we don't allow filming this and that so i just i have a <laughs> gremlin in my hand uh they were just like, no, we don't want you here so i just like went for a hotel because i knew they couldn't say no as long as i was paying that's great yeah i, I know you were having trouble with the airbnb sometimes you just don't want to tell them up front that you're going to shoot in there but I think it's only fair that they know, but you know, sometimes oh. you gotta do a little run and gun, you know? I know, my friend, she, we filmed in an Airbnb last January and they were very like, Airbnb is not my favorite people. Like they're not my favorite company as of right now with all the crap they were giving us. I know there was a lot of trouble happening over there with, with their service and everything. It's a great idea, but I mean, everybody's got to be vetted. And then, then there were, I think, some troubles in the booking too and everything, wasn't there? Uh, Yeah, with mine, the first mm -hmm. person wasn't that bad. Like, because they asked why I wanted it. I said, oh, I plan on using this as a set. And they're like, okay, we're not okay with filming. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I went with another one that was like, yeah, we're cool with everything, you know, it's fine. And then um, there was just like a no, like, I forgot what it was. But it was like a no requirement of like specifying why you were there. But then, like, mm -hmm. as soon as I paid and everything, the owner was just like, hey, just out of curiosity, why do you want to stay here? And I explained, like, I plan on using this as 
a filming location as well as somewhere right. for doctors to sleep. And she goes, I don't want you filming here. Ask your Airbnb for a refund. And I was like, what wow. the heck? That's crazy. Did she say why she changed her mind so quick when she found out you wanted to, to shoot in the space? No, she was just like, I just don't want filming here. That's it. That's weird. It's like she's hiding something. Her place that could be your next movie. Some being, you know, some some sort of, uh, you know, online she, booking going horribly wrong. She had cats, so I was seeing some reviews saying like, if you don't mind the smell of cat piss, I'm like, okay. You yeah, don't mind. yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, and don't you want to make a movie really about a killer bunny? Come on, really? Don't you? Monty Python beat me to it. <laughs> They did, but there was not enough gore. It's a pretty <laughs> rabid bunny in Monty Python. But what? Show him your bunny again. Show him. Oh yeah, I he's mean, a big old sweetheart. There's no way any horror is going to be inspired by this guy. Well, that's what would that's what would be so great, you know? Looks cute until you get up close, and then there's blood and gore. He was just purring. He's just just a sweet little man. He's he's a very uh, what's his name again? His name's Rex. What? His name's Rex. Yeah. I call him Gremlin sometimes. That, that Gremlin, even better. I, I, yeah, that's great. I know you've made him like famous on Instagram, so we had to get him out <laughs> here tonight. Does that, does it Rex appear in the movie somewhere? No, there's no way. Not I in this one. Okay. He's in. I, I did something as like a commemorative um, last year in Milwaukee, where I filmed a little bit every day. So whenever I was home, I like filmed a little bit of him there. So he was in that one. That's what Morgoth and I were talking about. We thought we had seen him. We thought he was in the, in this, but we knew we had seen him or something. He's in something. He's just not in my senior thesis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he should. He should. I, you know, he needs his own TV show, don't you think? He would be quite interesting in a TV show. Uh, <laughs> He's just, I was just talking to my mom um, when we got home from grabbing dinner and I was calling him a wuss because I was talking about how I wanted to, the pet store had albino bunnies that were for like on sale. I was like, why are no mm -hmm. one buying albino bunnies? I would have taken one home if I didn't already have him because yeah. like male bunnies can get territorial and Rex has never shown a bad bone in his body. So he would get mauled by another bunny. Wow. Crazy. I know I used to have like years and years and eons ago when I started magic. Uh, I actually did traditional magic and stuff, and I had doves and rabbits in the show at that point. So I've had a couple of big white bunnies in the show long, long, long time ago. So I'm kind of I'm kind of partial to them. They're nice. Now more it's like tarantulas and snakes. <laughs> So, so we want to move. Yeah, are you, are you ready to roll your movie? Is there anything you want to say as, as kind of an intro for the film? I guess I can do the little um, elevator pitch for it. It's about Please, um, yeah. insecure artist Jennifer. Um, insecure art student Jennifer goes to top student of class Beatrice for advice, only to learn that Beatrice has a dark secret. And is Jennifer willing to go into that secret or not? Like, is she willing to go deep to become a good artist mm -hmm. perfect well that's a that's a great setup for it so now everybody uh get your popcorn and your drinks and settle in uh we are now gonna run a shelby mcdougall's uh premiere here on the realm anyway uh this is insecurities enjoy how <laughs> will it work yes Awesome. The force is with us. I mean, you are getting better, but next time, do this instead. What's going First on? First thing, I will use a gray pencil instead of black Just trying to get the shot better. Just a little bit more. Okay, because I know doesn't you look like any uh, real drop with it too. Into this, like no real drop. Does it? I was having a hard because I okay. had mine cranked yeah, all the way up to get light to down do? on me, As we've seen, and um, I was having a hard time getting get the crank back overall, down. Good job, everyone! Clap. Hey. 
How are you? We lost her? Yeah. Let me guess. Did it tell you part of the It felt like you turned She probably just there. stepped out for a minute. Yeah, it sucks. I don't see what sucks about it. Come on, man. Yeah, Michael you got a few Thanks, but it really does suck. You good? I rushed it between work and other classes. Um, <laughs> no, no. I, I really I really think this is pretty cool. And I'm going to hang it up right there for all to see. Stop. Really? All right. Last up for critiques is Beatrice. Absolutely stunning. Honestly, you're the best one. Maybe just... Oh, no, wait, I take it back. I get what you were going for. Almost perfect. I see any recent markers. Hey. How are you? I was just wondering if we can talk now. Um, I know it's strange because I barely know you, but you seem cool and you're probably the best artist in the class and I could really use some help. Okay, um, so what are you thinking for the next project? A side profile. Okay, how should I approach it? Well, um, the chin is a bit tough, and ears are a bit strange because of the curves. And the human sashi? Can you just show me? No. Oh, I, just, I like I that. Like watching I think you win a cup. Sorry. I think you win the cup. I gotta go. Oh, your mic is on. You wanted to see me? Hey. What's up? So. How's your day? Well, I tried something bold. I cornered somebody to give me advice. And? Didn't really work. Let me give you some advice. All you gotta do it's practice, practice, practice. Practice, yes, I know, I know. Look, man, it means something. This isn't my expertise, but it helps. What exactly is your expertise? Other than zero commitment to a major. Hey, man, I've only changed it three times. Four times. Yeah, okay, fine, four times. But sometimes you have to be picky, and this is my future, and I'm gonna do the right thing. You know I'm kidding. It's just mom and dad and- Mom and dad, mom and dad, mom and dad. Yeah, they ended up with a disappointment and a starving artist, but they tolerate you because you get good grades. We'll see how long that lasts. Yeah. Well, enough of the tragic backstory. Look, do you want to practice to Bob Ross while I enjoy the treasure that he was? Maybe, depends on work. You know, I have a solution to that. Quit, like you keep saying you will. Nice work. Next up is Jennifer. This is quite lovely. Any comments on this piece? Yes, go ahead. I agree, it is lovely. You're showing a lot of improvement. Great. Yes, you as well. Really great piece. I particularly love how fluid it feels and how pleasing to the eye it looks. Great, nice comment. Yes. I had to disagree. I can see the hesitation and race marks. You should have think things through or follow your original work so you won't make any more mistakes. Well, constructive criticism is good. Anything else? Yes. I'm sorry. I feel like you want to get this done and it's sloppy, just like the rest of your work. Hold on, hold on. Constructive criticism is good. That was rude. I'm sorry, I should have worded differently. Thank you for presenting, Jennifer. Your work is showing great improvement, but some of the eraser marks are still showing and maybe take more time with each piece.
practicing. Yo, sick helicopter. It's a flower. I don't know, it makes a better helicopter, sorry. Will you get out of here? Amen. Okay, for the next half hour, it's free draw. Why were you sighing? What was that? I saw stick figures, then bam, beautiful flowers. You have some other art prepared, huh? Are you cheating? No, I would never cheat. Then explain how you whip that up in a matter of seconds. Magic? Well, don't. I know it's not magic. You are a thief. Stop. It is magic. Sure it is. But you pay someone else to draw for you. You know what? Why do I need to explain anything to you? Another shit day? It's such bullshit. What? Beatrice is an art thief, mm -hmm. and she has the nerve to say it's magic. Wait, can't you get kicked out for that? Mm hmm If I could just get her to draw something for me and prove she isn't one, then I'll believe her. Done. Well, um, it isn't done yet. You've had three days now. If it's so important, anyone can. There's an important lesson that he needs to learn. He, he betrayed the dark one. If I could just have some more time, I. You haven't betrayed him either, are you? No. Like 24 hours then to get it done. I was dark one might send someone to teach you a lesson. Say, cut off your ears like Van Gogh, or wake up in a bathtub with no kidneys. Stop. Or Please. Well, if it isn't the art thief, if you would just draw something for me and prove that you aren't one, why do you care so much? Because why should I work so hard when you are cheating? Just leave me alone. Oh, you didn't tell me how to friend Beatrice. She was just leaving. What's your name? Did you want something? Jennifer. What kind of something? What is the one thing in life you want the most? Well, I want to be a good artist. Oh, like Beatrice here. Well, she came to me a couple months ago looking for some help. What kind of help? The best kind. See, I specialize in something called traits. Wait, so is it like magic? In a way. Oh. So you aren't an art thief? You really believe this? Do I look like someone that would lie about this? I guess not. I don't. But no Beatrice is spreading to be a word about what I do. So this trade thing, can anyone I'll do it or it? If it really works. I think Beatrice's work is a good enough example. It is good work. Aren't you sick of always hearing practice makes perfect? It does become white noise. And can I pass you on for a trade say? You should see one first. I think she needs to see what happened before she decides. Not too late to back out? No. Do it. We'll watch from over there. Tonight, Nikki Grizz wishes to make a trade with the Dark One. Nikki, step forward. What is it you wish to trade for? Man, I want to be a badass guitarist. You know, like Slash? You know the consequences, correct? Yeah, yeah. Dark One, hear us out. Nikki Grease wishes to trade her mortal soul so she may live her limited life happily as a badass guitarist. 
and not suffer in the afterlife. This is her train. <gasps> Nikki wanted to be good at the guitar, so she sold her soul to the devil. And that is, that is what you did. Shit, dude. I mean, how much does it hurt? Is it just a second or does the wound last after? Seriously? I mean, you seriously want to do that? If it works, then yeah, what's one stab wound? Plus, Nikki got up right away. And if I do all the favors, I don't suffer as much in the afterlife. Uh huh. Do you even know what the favors are? By every night? <laughs> no. Do you want to know what I just had to do? I had to cut off someone's hands. Shit. Do you think I wanted to do that? No. No. Not one single pit, but it was either I did that or I was dealt with too. Is that what you want? To do horrible, terrible things every so often just for talent. To live in constant fear of taking one step out of line. No. 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 Great. Great. Now I just spend the rest of my life being a starving artist. Bullshit. Do you think every artist sells their soul? If I were you, I would just keep practicing and put myself out there more. Really? Really? I'll see you around. Yeah. I just don't really feel like talking about it. <clears throat> Do you want to watch Bob Ross? I was actually thinking about heading to bed though, so. By the way, hey, have you seen my phone? Whoa! That looks awesome. Really? Really. It's pretty quick too. Thanks. Yeah. So. No, I haven't seen your We are back. Am I on? Mike? Okay. There we go. Can they hear me? Can we hear you? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, yes, we're good. And there's Shelby. All right. Everybody, a nice round of applause for Shelby. Yes. And uh, Insecurity, sir. Senior thesis film. Very awesome. So I'm glad you guys, we saw some comments in the chats going on in there. So I'm glad you were enjoying it um if you have any other comments or any other thing there or, or, or congrats to shelby please throw it in there and we will relay that awesome thank you perfect 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 there you go shelby everybody's everybody's having a good time nice <laughs> there you go. How did you feel once you got it all done? Were you happy with what you uh, came out with? 
it was a big relief for sure when I finally got everything done because it took yeah. so long. There's some stuff definitely I would fix about if I were to go back. I'd definitely do a lot of different things different, but I still really like the outcome. As I said, a lot of people were liking it when I was doing the senior um, classes as well as it did play in a festival and become a semifinalist in it. So that was a big achievement for this as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We, we do have that. We, her, her laurels are, are in the, um, in the still and the overlays in there. We can, we can put that up. Give us one second. We got a, a couple of the photos you yes, sent me. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. There you go. Your official selection and, and you won something there. No, I just became a semifinalist. Oh, that's cool though. It, always getting in is the main thing, and then you, oh. and then everybody gets to see it. Oh yeah, it was really good. They had me um, film a little interview as well for it uh, mm -hmm. that I just did impromptu. They just sent the questions, said film yourself answering these questions, and we'll play it in the festival. Oh, that's great. That's very cool. I like that. Uh, have you shown it anywhere else? Uh, no, it hasn't played anywhere. I've been submitting it to places, but it so far has only played in the Senior Film Festival, mm -hmm. that festival we just showed, as and here. And here, tonight. Yes, excellent. And, and of course, as this is archived, and if you're seeing this in the archive, then, you know, they'll be watching it uh, much later, for years to come. Oh, yeah. As well and as going my back personal and YouTube as well. Yeah, and, and forever on YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. That is perfect. What, uh, what now the part that you're doing and you stepped in and did the part that I couldn't do, correct? Yes. Yeah. And how was that for you then directing and being in it I mean, when you're wearing a couple of different hats? Was that, did that make the job uh, a little harder for you? It was a little, it was hard, but like, thank God, um, I was able to minimize it to like, I was able to film it in a perspective that I wasn't too much in it as well as um, right, right. like it just became like a way that I could have this character in it. But because yeah. I hate acting, like I don't like acting at all and I don't like to edit myself acting. That's why I edited it out myself and made it an ambient voice like the entire time. Come on, Tarantino does it. You can do it. I don't. I only do it for like certain friends and like certain like emergency cases. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. I get that. Well, yeah, because you're more behind the scenes and putting it all together, right? Yes. You like that part of it? Perfect. Well, what do you what do you have planned next? Do you have uh, your next project lined up or something you're thinking about? I've been, ever since graduating, I've been doing a lot more writing, for sure, because that's what I can control the most, because I work in the yeah. retail world, hence why this took so long to arrange. So mm -hmm. I've been, I finished one script, but I'm not ready to release that one to anybody because it's, I'm eh about it, but I'm currently almost finished with one that I will be getting more out there. It's on like page 77 as we speak. And I plan on getting that like second eyes on it. And once I like make a lot of revisions to it, I'm planning mm -hmm. on sending that out to like screenwriting festivals to get some eyes on it. Oh, very cool. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, and get your, your writing chops kind of built up and everything. Yeah, that was one of my biggest compliments with like every single project I did while I was in college was everyone said, we really like your dialogue and writing style. So I was like, that's one thing I can control right now. So might as well do that while exactly. I can. Exactly. That, and, well, and that doesn't cost a fortune to, you know, then make it and produce it and distribute it then either. No, free writing, screenwriting systems. Yeah. There you go. Good idea. That's great. What well, it did, and and we were enjoying the uh, the dialogue too. I I said like while we were watching, it kind of ha has a bit of a Mean Girls flavor to it with the dialogue with them. I think in college, like my last couple of years, especially, I was a little obsessed with Jennifer's body. Hence, why one of the characters is named Jennifer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what well, you can see, I mean, you kind of you know. Uh, was any of that base uh, and like an, anything that, that really happened to you that was more autobiographical in, in the nature of those oh, relationships? Yeah. There was a lot of um, nothing personal for me, but just like mm -hmm. being in a film college for four years, you hear yeah. every single critique. Like that's hence how we do it is like the critique mm -hmm. system, like students lay in and not as that mean, but like they lay in on you um you um kind of just 
things I hear around is not personal based, but it was a lot based on the system of how we did is that exactly. making classes. Yeah. And so how much did the topic come up of, wow, I would sell my soul to the devil for this kind of career? Not that much, <laughs> but a lot of people uh, <laughs> I do, I mean, super into like witchcraft and stuff like that. So that was, was kind of a uh, witchcraft and stuff. Really? A lot, I had a lot of friends that were super into that. That's very cool. Now that's really interesting too, because I like that. I, I like that whole angle, obviously, because I'm like you, and that's where we met. Is at a horror film, you know, festival, and uh, or or horror convention, and so clearly, you know, we like that kind of stuff. But I know a lot of witchy people, a lot of uh, witchy women and stuff like that. So that's really interesting, right there. Did you do much research on the on the like the witchy Wiccan or supernatural? And, and of that uh, that experience. No, I did all made up. It's just all yeah. completely just my world building. So I didn't mm -hmm. have the base on something and someone from that community coming at me saying, no, that's not correct. Did you get a lot of, of feedback like that? No, none at all. Okay, good. Good. That, yeah, because, I mean, it seems like you might. I mean, that's something that people could but i mean when you're building your own world that's in a film and it's basically kind of horror and fantasy supernatural together uh it, it can it can be weird the things that that people might critique uh something like that uh, so yeah, i'm glad I was a little scared with the baffment statue because i do know that religion doesn't lean mm -hmm. into any of that that's why i'm kind of like i just chose something that is genuinely shocking to the general public but people that do know it uh, no, it's not a yeah. scary factor. I just chose like shock factors for a general public, but yeah. then did just my own world building. So, mm -hmm. that, was there any religious did, uh, flash, uh, you know, anything coming at you from that angle either? No, no. Okay, good. No, that's very good. You didn't have to face anything like that either. Because I liked it. I liked the whole, you know, vibe of it and where, and where you took it from artists and then uh into the supernatural the witchy part at the end um sarah s says uh congrats shelby oh you're um, getting a lot of congratulations uh, in the uh, chat says, shelby, can't hey. wait, uh for uh can't wait more from you great work who said that uh alex raven oh alex yeah uh, uh mr raven says i can't wait to see what you're going to do when you get out of school out. Mm -hmm. uh, there is this great creativity. Sue uh, Cook asks, are you using local actors from Chicago? Are you using local actors from Chicago, Sue Cook was asking. I was using Milwaukee actors um, because my school was based in Milwaukee, so I wanted people mm -hmm. closer to it. So I mainly got all of my actors from a Facebook page called Actors in Wisconsin. Yeah, I was the only one that was going to come in from Chicago at that point because we yeah. knew each other and she she knew I'd done other horror films and everything so uh, I was gonna do that until you know like I said got got waylaid by some health issues and stuff and um, a little surgery such fun and uh, then well you did a, you did a great job with the part though that's what I was wondering if the actors were from uh, her school or not were they all um, from school? They were from the area, right? They were from the area, yes. None of them were actually from the school. One of them was a graduate. Um, the guy student yeah. extra, he had graduated the year prior because we were talking on set. He was saying, I used to go to the school. Mm -hmm. But that's no, the that's cool. one that was from um, the school, at least. Everyone else was just in the Milwaukee, like Wisconsin area. Okay, that's what I thought because I, I didn't I didn't know. Do you have a drama department there? To like, you know, it's film school, but are there is there yeah. like an acting? Our part actual of that? Um, our big alumni is William Defoe, and he was in the um, theater department. So he ah, okay. That that's I thought there was theater up there. Yeah, that's very cool. Did you get people um, auditioning for you from the theater? No, well. They didn't really tell me their backgrounds because um, mm -hmm. well, how I did the auditioning process was because I filmed this in 2021, it was in the midst of COVID. So I got all the videos from people right. and no one really gave me like their backgrounds of like 
acting or anything until like i casted them and i asked them like for short little bios for like just to promote them for it and all of them just gave me primarily acting things yeah and it's interesting it's like you you were talking about like during covid the whole industry once production things went back into production it was all done remotely like that and i mean and it some of it had been done like that beforehand but like like streaming got big during covid and everything else and then afterwards uh even auditioning there's so much more of it done with a self tape or a zoom call or something like that yeah all of mine did um self tapes when they did it mm -hmm. yeah that's cool i think that's a great and very you know convenient way for you to do it because otherwise then you know you don't have to have a physical space and go out and and, and meet with everybody and everything and do a, an actual call like that you can do it online and then people can send it in. So I, I like doing it that way. I remember I also got the um, luck of the draw and like a week prior to filming, I was on someone else's set helping out and Christina who played Beatrice was one of the big actresses on that set. So I got to meet her in person a week prior to filming. So that was really cool. Mm hmm yeah. Yeah, and do you keep up with everybody you work with? Uh, I mainly keep up with, um, we I don't, talk that much i have all their emails still so i update them on everything like i let them know about tonight yeah. um i guess the main ones that keep up as far mm -hmm. as like social media and everything would be um monette who played the teacher always responds to every single email i send mm -hmm. casey and i continue like we'll talk on social media like she just recently asked me for the link to this so she can use it in a demo reel mm -hmm. and trillin one of the um student extras i'm friends with her on social media um Emily, who played um, Nikki, recently got engaged. We don't really talk, but I figured that's cool to share that she recently got engaged like a year ago. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And Christina is um, building her career as well. Like, I'm friends with her on social media. We don't really talk, but mm -hmm. she moved to Georgia shortly after filming and has building, been building her career there. Oh, that's very cool. Well, they, they, there's a lot of production down there and everything now. It's like, you know, beside New York and LA, and there's always been some stuff here in Chicago. But it seems like, you know, the, the other spot now is down in Georgia. Oh, yeah. I keep up with a, um, a lot of my crew as well. All my crew, I should say, is mm -hmm. um, UWM based. That was who um, was from my school, was all my crew. Yeah. And that's, I kind of figured because they're all in the, the department there with you then, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, well I, aren't you working on each other's projects a lot then? Did you lead, lead, lend your talents to them as well? Uh, yeah, I definitely helped a lot of them out. I told them if they never need a helping hand, like, just let me know in advance because a lot of them right. were doing their senior thesis when I graduated. I know mm -hmm. Nat, um, one of my friends who was sound and camera on the first day of shooting, me and her were on a set together again that mm -hmm. following January. Otherwise, the rest of them I just keep up with. I watched all their seniors because um, it's a little hard because I live in a different state than them, so... But oh, I know yeah. people are graduated at this point. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So what was the hardest part on, on the whole project? What was the, what was the, the toughest part to get done? Uh, probably the toughest part. Honestly, I think it was like, just it was just nitty gritty stuff. Like, as I mentioned before, the um, setting locations as well as scheduling, like that was probably the hardest yeah. the littlest thing was lugging the equipment everywhere because i rented yeah. out a bunch of equipment and i think it rained one of the days i was walking the equipment back to the door room i had to get the, like because i got all the equipment myself and was lugging it everywhere myself yeah and got that is a drag yeah those are probably yeah. only like the tough toughest parts because i took i took my time with editing so that never became tough it was just like the little like audio snippets in there that became mm -hmm. like tough and like figuring like the Killer, killer darlings parts were like, what scenes should I cut? Which ones should be trimmed? Yeah, yeah. It was just like just the littlest, nittiest, grittiest stuff that were like the toughest. Yeah, but that's cool. I always kind of like the edit. That's a that you know, it's like you, you shape it once in pre-production, you shape it as you shoot in production, and then the third time you actually get to shape the film is in the edit. So I, I always kind of like the edit. You know, we, I, Vinny and I sat down and we worked on Dark Realm together and we sat in and I sat in on all that editing and that, I actually found that pretty satisfying, you know? Did you feel the same way? Uh, 
it, it's there in certain parts. Editing is not my favorite thing. I like the writing and production stuff. Like the that's why it took mm-hmm. so long with editing. Like I took a whole semester basically to edit because it's not my favorite. So I just kept. Um, I edited basically all the second semester. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool, and that's easier than than finding someone to edit and then coordinating with them as well. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's also a requirement too. Like um, with the senior thesis project, you're required to write it, you're required to direct it, you're mm-hmm. required to do a majority of the camera work, and you're required to edit it. Right, right, because that was part of the whole thesis then, right? Yes. That, yeah. So what was your favorite part of making the film then? Like you said, was that the, the writing and everything up front? Uh, I think um, one thing that always sticks out to me about this is the ending and how... Um, no one knows if she sold her soul or not. Like one of my favorite things is people asking if she did or not. Cause I remember Monette, the teacher asked me if she does or not. And yeah. I said, I don't know. Cause I left the ending. So as a, I don't know. Cause in the beginning I didn't mm-hmm. want her to, but everyone in my senior one class wanted me to, but I refused. So that's <laughs> <my favorite. laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta hold your ground, right? Yeah. Well, that's, I think that's really interesting. I, I, I'm in a movie that has an ambiguous ending like that called The Item. And that, that thing went to Sundance and everything. And, and that was a big part of talking point about it was, you know, did it happen? Did it not happen? What happened at the end? And I thought that was, was cool that you use that kind of an ending because it does. It makes people talk about it because they're all questioning whether that happened or not. And I think it's interesting what you're talking about, too, is that everybody kind of goes in with their own thoughts and feelings and agenda for it and as to what they think actually happened then. Yes. You know, what do you think? Were you, were you pretty fascinated or surprised? It sounds like maybe that, that people were all wondering exactly where you were going with it. I was kind of happy that people were asking me about it, especially with the behind the scenes of the argument with the class of just like them wanting me to, but I had the final say because I didn't want her to, but I also kind of wanted to please the class. So I just did the, I don't know ending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I thought that was an interesting way to, to leave it. And then, you know, it's like, then it's like the audience has to engage with the film with the art to, you know, kind of figure it out for themselves. So I think that's cool that you did that. You know? Yes, as well as um, doing the I don't know ending, the whole speech that Beatrice gives at the end with the whole, if she can go back, she would practice and everything. I had some mm-hmm. people telling me I like that speech. I like that she gives that because it actually is motivation. And someone was yeah. telling me to cut it and everyone was just like, no, do not cut that. So that's why I did the I don't know ending because I feel like if I had her sell her soul, then it would completely be saying, hey, screw Beatrice's speech type of thing. Right, right. Uh, sir, uh, sir, as, uh, mm-hmm. uh, how do you like the difference between writing a screenplay versus a story? All right, uh, Sarah asked uh, you, uh, Shelby, if uh, uh, what do you like better, uh, writing a screenplay or a story? Is that what she's saying? How do you like the difference between? Uh, how do you like the difference? What do you feel about the difference between writing a story, you know, uh, as to writing an actual script, a screenplay? I think the screenplay um, is still storytelling in my opinion. It's just like screenplay, it is a little bit of an easier format for me with the splitting mm-hmm. it up between your exterior action and dialogue because it has more of a structure. Like you have to start every single scene with an action. Uh, you can keep track with characters by their dialogue. Like I kind of like the structure of screenwriting more than storytelling because as much as I do like, you know, reading and everything. It's just right. um, with storytelling, it's the big like paragraphs. Well, screenwriting is all laid out for you right there so you can keep track of where everything is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like they say, it's like it, anything that's coming from a story or, or a novel and then, you know, being rewritten into a screenplay, it really is a whole different animal, isn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I know Sarah, and, and she's a writer, she writes a uh, story. You know, she's writing a narrative and, you know, creepy, you know, horror stories and things like that. And uh, it really is, you know, uh, a whole different thing to then write, you know, a screenplay and and make it, uh, 
screen ready because they're, they're, everything you need for the script uh, and, and how you figure out the budget, how you figure out everything, it's all on those pages. It's all in the script. Okay, we're coming up on an hour. okay. all right. Well, Shelby, uh, anything else you want to say to the audience or anything? I mean, we want to thank you so much for, for being on here and sharing your movie with us tonight. And again, uh, all, uh, you know, applause in the chat. Thank you very, very much. So is there anything you want to say in closing? Uh, not much. Just thank you for having me on. I'm definitely, as I said, I'm looking forward to just writing more in general, since that's the biggest thing I can do in this world. Um, yeah. I also wanted to say, hey, I'm wearing a Gilman shirt, you know, in honor of Rico Browning from mm -hmm. the last couple of days, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, you know, uh, thank you for being on and, and sharing a film with us and everything. And we look forward to seeing what you're going to do next. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get to work together on something you do. Oh, yeah. I'll send you actually a copy of my script when I'm done with it, just so you can be one of my second eyes on it so you can see what it is. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Love to. Thank you. All right. So, everybody, uh, once again, our special guest tonight, Shelby McDougall and her film Insecurity. So, everybody, thank you for joining us out there in the chat. And Shelby, thank you again. And um, can we see Rex one more time? We just got a one more shot. He of ran off. He ran off. <laughs> Did he run off? Oh, mom's getting him. Hold on. <laughs> I guess he's right there. Oh, oh, oh. We're oh. looking for Rex, everybody. Hold on. Hi. Did we get Hi. Did we... Well, Rex? Please. All right, there you go. See, that's a proper sign off on all of this. How? And now tell us how much does Rex enjoy the movie? He just enjoys everything. He's just a sweet little man. So, yeah, he just gave me some. No, he's got to love the movie. Otherwise, he winds up in the stew. Come on. Come on. Come on. He he's enjoyed be on the Hannibal TV series. He enjoyed the <laughs> Hannibal TV series in the first season of Witcher. <laughs> All right. Well, we want the Rex mini series. Come on. At least on at least on Insta. So. <laughs> Oh All yeah. Right. I take random. Right. Thank you, Shelby. Uh, and thank you for running the film. Really love it. And congrats on getting it done and graduating and everything. Very awesome. Uh, and congrats from our audience. And thank you guys in the audience for always coming and hanging with us. Truly appreciate it. May all your days and nights be full of dark, sticky fun. Hello. <laughs>